You're very welcome to what is the most extraordinary tribal gathering. There are people from government, there are people from the financial markets, there are people from companies, there are people from all over the place. But I think it's appropriate for the time. Everyone now has to be part of this change effort. Do good, build something with the right motives, do business with a moral compass, and you can transform wherever you are. I'm ready for humanity to be disrupted in the direction of good and to solve our grand challenges. When we started to think about where we'd be in the spirit of regeneration, we thought about the Barnes Wetland Centre, which was in the last part of the last century, the 20th century, for reservoirs that served uh, London. Then Sir Peter Scott came along and looked at this space and thought, wouldn't it be wonderful if we took it back to nature? I mean, here at the Wetland Centre in Barnes, we've seen some extraordinary regeneration, recovery. Nature will recover when we give it a chance. But we don't just see this at home, we see it around the world, whether this is humpback whales now coming back to their pre-overexploited levels. The same with the wildebeest roaming across the Mara. We just need to give nature a chance to restore and regenerate itself, and it will. I've just returned from a fortnight in Kenya and Tanzania, working up and around at the border of both nations. And there perhaps are few places than the very cradle of humanity to remind us of our roots and our rise as humanity. I spent much of my time meeting with local communities, with government officials, with landowners, looking at the possibility of a green corridor, a super highway, if you like, that will potentially run from Lake Victoria right the way through to the Indian Ocean. Why would we want that? To protect some of the most ancient migration routes that have existed on our planet. Last May, I was invited to climb the biggest tree in the world in the Sierra Nevada mountains. It's a monster, an absolute monster. I mean, its trunk is bigger than from here to that far wall. And you get to the top, you look to the right, and you see the everlasting greenery of Sequoia Park. It, it's, it's Elysian. And then you look to the left, and you see Death Valley. And this tree is four and a half thousand years old. This tree has outlived, to my knowledge, 37 different civilizations. Each one of them will have had an establishment full of people like us. Just imagine, we screwed it 37 times. <laughs> what does it take to make a group of people like us realize that we've got to do something. I know John because in the year 2003, I was talking to my dear friend Richard Sandbrook and we had Brian Wilson and the Beach Boys playing at Eden. So I said, invite all the cool people that you were brought up with in the environment movement and everybody turned up. We're now exporting this across the world. We're doing a project in China, another in Australia. We're just completing a project in Dubai. All the same basic principle. It is about liberating the ideas to actually make us live sustainably and easily on the planet Earth so that actually we've got a future. It's interesting that one of the companies here is The Body Shop uh, International, and they've been renowned for a very long time of being socially and environmentally responsible. But they, like many other companies, are realizing now being responsible is no longer enough, even if you drive it right the way through your supply chains and then right out to your customers and consumers. It's an interesting question, what's the difference between a, 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 a business that has a corporate social responsibility program uh, and a corporate activist. I believe a corporate activist is a business that stands up, that takes risks, that speaks out for the urgent change that needs to happen in the world. And a, a sustainable business, of course, is, is, is looking at itself, is, is seeking good practice. What we need, and I think what we have at The Body Shop, is a business that brings both of those together, a sustainable business that speaks out for change. That's what the world needs. The green swan idea, rift of a guy called uh, Nassim Nicholas Taleb, he talked about black swans. Those were exponentially worsening problems. Green swans are the opposite. What we need now is system change. Green Swan Day is just coming back to that message saying, we've got to do better and we've got to uh, address the systemic dysfunctions that we uh, now face, not just the being nicer, being uh, better, and a few percentage points of change every year. It's embracing the scale of the challenge and it's saying, let's pull all the levers. Let's not just 
do something technical and mechanical. Let's be, as Tim says, let's be political when we need to be. Let's reframe the conversation. Let's make this as big a change as we possibly can. And none of that means that we ignore the detail. We will go right down into the detail. But it's when I join up the different parts of the answer that I get a systemic solution and then I unlock everything that we're looking for uh, and the future that we want to build together. There seems to be heightened awareness amongst corporations and governments and activists that indeed this is a, a, a challenge which is getting out of our control. Those corporations are government institutions which don't will be left behind. Those that do and embrace this will, will realize the opportunity for greater market share, greater relevance in solving societal challenges. And for me, I'm particularly excited about this. No, it's absolutely necessary that we have a manifesto for regeneration. I think it will appeal to people. I'm a politician, so I think about what uh, people connect with, what people think is important, what people are prioritizing. If we don't have this conversation between all the pieces, government, private sector, industry, finance, the lot, civil society, it's going to be very hard to take people with us and very hard to inject that kind of urgency into the innovation and technology that uh, is going to be needed if we're going to break through in the way that we absolutely have to face with the emergency uh, that is now clearly in our face in terms of the risks we're taking with the climate and all the natural systems that we absolutely depend on. And, and here we are in the wetlands, symbol of uh, imagination showed in the past. A group of people saw a piece of land that wasn't being used and had a beautiful vision of how it could be used in a much more uh, productive uh, way and uh, it's beautiful and is uh, therefore a really appropriate symbol for everything we're discussing today. Do you know what? Anybody who has the privilege of talking to young people these days need not fear for the future. They're smart. All they need is for us to get our passion back and a sense that we don't need to hold on to our certainties of the past but that the future remains bright and still remains ours to make. And I think that's part of the point of your 70th birthday. The future still remains ours to make if we're brave enough to seize the world by the throat and smile a little bit. Thank you. Thank you.